Welcome to a lesson on solving one-step equations by multiplying and dividing. Any replacement or any value for a variable that makes an equation true is called a solution of an equation. So for example, x equals 3 is a solution to 6x equals 18 because 6x means 6 times x. So if we replace or substitute 3 for x, 6 times 3 does equal 18, therefore x equals 3 is a solution. Another example would be x equals 45 as a solution to x divided by 5 equals 9. Don't let this fraction bar scare you. This fraction bar just represents division. So if we substitute 45 for x, we would have 45 divided by 5 equals 9, which is true. And that's the reason why x equals 45 is a solution. So to solve an equation means to find all of the solutions or all the values for the variable that make the equation true. To make this idea sink in, let's take a look at these two examples. We're given 8x equals 72, and we're asked, is x equals 9 a solution? So to see if x equals 9 is a solution, we'll substitute 9 for x in the equation and see if the equation is true. So is 8 times 9 equal to 72? That's the question. And 8 times 9 does equal 72. So the answer is yes, x equals 9 is a solution. Number two, we have x divided by three equals seven. We want to know if x equals 18 is a solution. So again, we'll substitute 18 for x and then see if this equation is true. So we'd have 18, again, divided by three equals seven. That's our question. Well, 18 divided by three is equal to six, and six does not equal seven. So the answer is no, x equals 18 is not a solution. Now that we understand what a solution is, if we're given an equation, we want to be able to solve it. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at some equality principles. So for any real numbers, if A equals B is true, meaning these two are equal, if we multiply both sides of the equation by some value C, the result will also be true. And if we have A equals B and we divide both sides of the equation by C, as long as c doesn't equal zero, the equation will still be true. The reason this is important is that we can use these principles to solve equations. The goal of solving linear equations is to isolate the variable on one side of the equation. And we can do that by multiplying and dividing on both sides of the equal sign. So let's take a look at our examples. Number one, we have 3x equals 36. So to solve this equation for x, we want x on one side of the equation by itself or isolated. And since x is on the left side, we want to have x equals some number. So looking at our equation, we don't want this 3 here. And we know that 3 and the x are attached by multiplication. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So if we divide both sides of the equation by 3, we maintain equality. And on the left side, this simplifies to 1. So we have 1 times x, which is just x. And on the right side, we have 36 divided by 3 which is equal to 12. So the solution to our equation is x equals 12. And of course, if we wanted to, we could go back and replace x with 12 to make sure that it's true, but it does work. On the second example, we have y divided by 2 equals 18. Again, our goal is to isolate y, so we want y equals some number on the right. And just so we have some more space, I'm going to rewrite this. Now when we look at this, we see y divided by 2. We need to think to ourselves, how do we undo dividing by 2, or what's the opposite of dividing by 2? Well, the opposite of dividing by 2 would be multiplying by 2. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2. If you want, you can think of this as 2 over 1. So these 2's simplify to 1. So we're left with y on the left side of the equation. And we have 2 times 18, which is equal to 36 on the right side. So y equals 36 is the solution to our equation. Let's take a look at two more. Notice on this next example, we have the variable x on the right side of the equation. It doesn't matter which side the variable is on as long as we isolate it. So we should be thinking to ourselves, we want, so we should be thinking we want x isolated on the right side of the equation this time. And so to isolate this x here, since the seven and the x are attached by multiplication, we'll divide both sides by seven. 
on the right side, 7 divided by 7 is equal to 1, and 1 times x is just x. And then on the left side, we have 56 divided by 7, which is equal to 8. So we have 8 equals x, or if we want, we can rewrite this in the more common form of x equals 8. And this is normally how it's given. And for this one, I'll rewrite it again so we have more space. So our goal is to isolate y, so we want y equals some number. And here we have y divided by 6. So to undo dividing by 6, we'll have to perform the opposite operation, or multiply by 6. So we can multiply this by 6 as long as we do the same on the right side of the equation here. And again, if it's helpful, we can think of this as 6 over 1. These simplify to 1. So we're left with 1y, or y on the left side. On the right side, we have 6 times 15, which is equal to 90. So our solution is y equals 90. Before we go, let's take a look at one application problem. If the cost of gasoline is $3 per gallon, and you spend $42, how many gallons of gasoline did you purchase? So let's see if we could write an equation to model this situation and then solve it. We know the cost has to be equal to $3 times the number of gallons purchased. So if we let x equal the number of gallons purchased, our equation would be $3 times x must equal $42. And now if we solve this equation for x, we'll know how many gallons of gas we purchased. So we want to isolate the x on the left side of the equation. These are attached by multiplication. So we'll perform the opposite operation, or divide both sides by 3. So by doing this, this simplifies to 1x, or just x, so we've isolated the variable. And 42 divided by 3 is equal to 14. So you purchased 14 gallons of gas. Okay, I hope this was helpful.